Local 3 Sports. This is Friday Night Football with Ben Bobick, Samantha Cassano, and Greg Glover. Friday Night Football is brought to you by Food City. Nobody does food like Food City. And Sonic. Mmm. Sonic. And now, Friday Night Football. Welcome into your favorite TV show, and we start things off tonight with a fun fact. We are officially over one month into the 2023 season. Now, I know what you're thinking. Ben, we just started, and I'm thinking, guys, I know. But we mean it when we say the best is yet to come, because the real players take their game to the next level this time of year. The real teams begin to separate from the pack. Who's it gonna be? Only one way to find out. Let's kickstart this bad boy with our week six game of the week. It's time for the Friday Night Football Game of the Week, sponsored by Warren and Griffin, your local five-star law firm, supporting high school football for decades in Chattanooga and North Georgia. CCS has given Boy Buchanan fits ever since the two became region opponents in 2017. So much the Bucks have yet to win a region game over the Chargers. But these Buccaneers are different. They're led by the winningest high school football coach in the entire state. Could they finally turn the tide? We turn things over to sports reporter Samantha Cassano, who joins us live from Boy Buchanan. As always, she had a front row seat to the action tonight. How did it shake out, Samantha? Hey, Ben, yeah, what a game. For six straight years, Boyd Buchanan has fallen to CCS. They were tired of it. Between having Gary Rankin at the helm, an unreal defense, and a pretty lethal offense, this certainly seemed like a prime opportunity for the Bucks to give the Chargers a taste of their own medicine. Boyd Buchanan fired up out the gates, hoping that tire can stay in Bucks territory this year. We're scoreless midway through the second quarter. Houston Hicks hands the ball off to Jalen Sandifer, who punches it in from a few yards out. Houston, we have no problem. The Bucks are on the board. We hyped up that boy defense pregame. It comes to life late in the second. Gavin Berger sneaks the ball off to Ladrius Hollingsworth. Gerald Young forces the fumble. Caden Bates recovers. Teamwork makes the dream work. Bucks cash in. It's 14-0 at half. No slowing down in the third, Jatavius Davis uses his legs and takes it the rest of the way. Boyd dominating on all cylinders. The Chargers make some noise in the third quarter. Gavin Berger airs a pass to Jermaine Stinson who hauls it in. CCS able to cut the deficit. How about Jalen Sandifer? Number nine had himself a night pulling out the stiff arm on the score. Three touchdowns for the senior. Boyd Buchanan stays undefeated. A perfect 6-0 with a 35-14 win over CCS. We gave up seven points really, which was outstanding by our defense. And offensively, we kept hitting it in there. It didn't go good early, but they're a good football team too. You know, they had something to do with that, but we kept we kept being tough up front and we started wearing on them and getting physical and they didn't like that. Uh, it's real good, you know? And the best part is we got to do it as a team. You know what I mean? Like it was all of us. It wasn't just one or two of us. We all did it as a team. Perhaps most importantly, Sandifer said that post-game meal tonight is going to hit different. He's going to be eating like a champ, and he certainly deserves it tonight. Gary Rankin building something special here on Buccaneer Trail. For now, live at Boy Buchanan, Samantha Cassano, Local 3 Sports. Yeah, Samantha, he definitely earned himself at least a milkshake or something. Get the sprinkles on top as well. Well, from one big-time region game to another, Ray County and Walker Valley would love to knock off defending region champ McMinn County to claim the crown. But the thing is, they stand in each other's way. Now the Golden Eagles have won this region before the Mustangs have not. Makes for some must-see football. The Stangs cheerleaders are ready to roll on edge though. They know this is a big game for their squad. So does their squad. Evan Schwarz will flush from the pocket. But look at this kid. One of the best QBs in our area throws it across his body. Hudson Makich gets him to the doorstep. He sets up Malachi Martin. Eminem having a year for Walker Valley. He tumbles into the end zone. Literally, he did a flip. And there's that flipping alien again, man. Something going on up there in Walker Valley. Check the defense out. Ray County quarterback Caleb Carr trying to make a play. Pass or run with the open field tackling display from Connor Phillips here. That's so beautiful. Mustang sticking to the ground game to give us the Tyran Forte. Not sure if there's any relation to Matt Forte. Either way, running is his Forte. As he blows by the Ray County defense for six, Walker Valley needed to make a statement in region, and they do just that as they take it to Ray County tonight. The Mustangs get a monster 42-12 win at the MAC over the Golden Eagles. 
just down the road at Bears Stadium. We got a more fun one as the Bears put their undefeated record on the line against Heritage, who's making the trip across state lines. Again, the Generals came to play up 9 0, looking to add to it. This field goal goes wide, and it's all the momentum Bradley Central needed. They go right down the field. Caleb Martin to Max Wilson and Mad Max on the loose. He wanted it all. We'll get tackled short of the goal line. Not too much longer. Martin is going to punch it in, and the Bears started their march back towards their comeback, and they would complete it. Bradley Central improves to 5-0 with a 35-16 win over Heritage. They'll hit the road to Farragut for a big region game next Friday. The Generals get Southeast Whitfield at home. Now back to region play. Megs County on the broadcast tonight. Shout out to Cater. They take on Central. Caden Jones down the field to Owen Maddox. These Purple Panthers game to play tonight in the All Black in the Heinz Red Zone. Now Jones finds his number one guy, Ronye Watson. And Central was looking good at home. But the Tigers know a thing or two about playing winning football. How about Ethan Meadows right up the middle? And look at Meadows. Yeah, you ain't catching me, cuz. Megs County making the trip down 58. Worth it. They keep it rolling. Meadows wants to go deep. And he goes deep to Tough Ricker. What a football name. Tough Ricker. And what a game for the Megs County Tigers as they win 34 to 6. To improve the 5 0, keep your eye on these Tigers, man. Back again. Let's hit to the scoreboard for the first time tonight. Bledsoe County winners over Teleco Plains. We saw Bradley Central over Heritage. Marion County over Brainerd, 30 to 12. East Ridge over Chattanooga Prep, their first win of the season. Good for the Pioneers. They've been playing good ball. Whitwell region winners over Copper Basin. Sale Creek over Grundy County at home, 37 to 6. Signal Mountain on the road over Lookout Valley. McCauley. 35 to nothing over MBA as they avenge that state semifinal loss and McMinn County gets a region win over Ottawa. Here's your pick for the Friday Night Football Play of the Week, brought to you by Center for Sports Medicine. We keep players in the game. Tough to choose as always, but man, was this play sharp. Saudi Daisy's Tucker Ross dropping one in a bucket to Gage Welch. And the hands from Welch were just superb. You love seeing these plays being made on Friday nights, especially if you're a Saudi Daisy fan, because, hey, let's be real. If you ain't from Saudi, you ain't nobody. Our week five play of the week. And as fate would have it, we'll head north to Saudi Daisy to see if Midnight has struck on Cinderella and Hicks and Wildcats. Plus, a great non-region game up in Cleveland featuring the Blue Raiders and Red Bank Lions. Keep it locked right here on Local 3 Friday Night Football. We'll be right back. Cheer on with the Friday Night Football Cheerleaders of the Week. After opening the season 0-2, the Hicks and Wildcats have rattled off three straight wins. None bigger than last week when they went on the road to undefeated Loudon and took down the Redskins on their home field. But anything goes in a rivalry game. Could the good times continue to roll up in Saudi Daisy? And when I tell you Robbie T was packed tonight, man, I made it a line to get in full of cars packed up. Stands on a single person home in Saudi Daisy or Hickson tonight. And Wildcat fans had a chance to cheer right from the jump. The Trojan try to pooch the kick. Ron Suttle scoops up, makes a move, and he has nothing but daylight. Ronnie Suttles on the opening kickoff. Ain't no pumpkin carriage picking up these Wildcats. Cinderella who? Hickson on top 7 and nothing from the start. But what a response by the Saudi Daisy Trojans. A great drive as they run the ball right at Hickson and Tucker Ross pounds it in. We're all tied up at seven apiece. Now the Wildcats get to show off their offense. Going one way, back the other. Chase Barnard to Tariq Reese in stride and Reese just goes north to south here. Right up the Trojan defense put Hickson on the doorstep. Then the Wildcats go cuckoo for Coco. Coco Kendricks pounds it in. These Hicks and Wildcats are a sight to see. They win their fourth straight, 42 to 14 over Saudi Daisy to improve to three and zero in region play as well. Let's kick it to Bradley County again, specifically Benny Monroe Stadium as the Cleveland Blue Raiders play host to the Red Bank Lions. Red Bank got the best of Cleveland last year, but these Blue Raiders are different as they're catching a stride. Delonte Adams, man, can do it with his arm, his legs as he jump starts this Cleveland offense. He sets up his man Brian Beard Jr. and BB. Gone to the place of dwelling. Cleveland on top early. And these Cleve Vegas folk really feeling the buzz from their football team. Now about the response from Red Bank, though. On the kickoff, Cordell Howard gets loose. And just when you thought he could take it, he goes down. But a great return. But these Cleveland Blue Raiders have put everyone on notice. They defeat Red Bank 51-7 tonight. 
If you ain't watching now, you will soon. Let's go to LaFette. Ramblers and Gordon Lee in region play. LaFette on the doorstep. Easy money. Callis Finley. Ramblers on top. 7 0. Trojans don't even blink. Peyton Gross running hard here. Z finds pay dirt. And it's all tied up at 7 apiece. Everyone running hard in LaFette tonight. And by everyone, we mean Peyton Gross. Yeah, uh, he gone. Trojans bringing the bounce and the burners on the road, son. Now their defense is going to get involved. Finally, someone passing. And now we may know why they didn't all along. This Dawson Pendergrass bomb is picked off by, all right, you get one guess, uh, Peyton Gross, of course. This one would actually go to OT, and it's Gordon Lee who gets the win, 21 to 20 on the road in a region thriller. Let's get back to the scoreboard. Sequatchie County bounces back, gets a win over Coalfield. South Pittsburgh, the Pirates, man. Shut out North Jackson across state lines. Tyner over Sweetwater at home. And we got Pepperell over Chattooga as we get down into Georgia. Koala Creek, winners over LFO in region play. Darlington sneaks by Dade County at home. And Dalton loses a tough one at home to Cedartown. Gordon Central winners over Fenton County, 42 to zip. And Motto over Murray County, 49 to seven. Catch all of the fun on Fan Cam, sponsored by Arby's. We have the meats. The Ridge Cut rivalry has turned into one of Chattanooga's best. I mean, who else plays for a spray painted tire? So we had to survey the scene at Boyd Buchanan tonight as we bring you our week six fan can. time for the Friday Night Football Band of the Week with Greg Glover, sponsored by Armor Exteriors, your locally owned, not locally franchised, exterior remodeling experts. I've been told my intros are a little long and wordy, so let's just get right to it. This group, the Mustang Marching Band from Walker Valley High School, they're large and they sound great. Take a listen, your Band of the Week. The Baylor Red Raiders have found their stride after a week one setback, and we all know what game looms a week from today. But Brentwood Academy is no walkover in region play, and we can't forget Macaulay beat the Eagles last week. If they did, now Big Red has to, right? And the Baylor cheer camp girls were out at halftime, and you won't find a more excited group of cuties in Chattanooga taking full advantage of their moment, as you can see right there. Their Red Raiders were taking full advantage of the Eagles' defense in the first half. Whit Muschamp over the middle to Max LeBlanc, and Baylor is on the doorstep. Well, it worked once. Might as well go back to the well, right? Great hands here from 11. Baylor up 24-7 on Brentwood Academy at half. But there's halftime adjustments, and then what Brentwood Academy did tonight. Right out of the gate in the second half, they scored their highly touted QB, George McIntyre. Finds his man for a score. The Eagles would pick off a must jam pass. And they're going to drive right back down the field, and there's a reason this McIntyre cat is the number one recruit in Tennessee for the class of 25. Nearly fumbles, regains his composure, and lets his guy make a play to bring the Eagles all the way back into this game. They would tie it, but Baylor would pull it out 31-24, to quite the second half at the Baylor School tonight. To Reggie Whitefield we go. East Hamilton looking for their first region win in 5A's. They take on Howard, and it's been an up-and-down season for the Canes, so now they dip into their bag of tricks. Trey Crawford to Maddox, Bohannon to Kyrese Willis. How about a little razzle-dazzle on I-24, huh? Touch down Canes as they lead 7-0. Howard hm, didn't even blink. Look at Quan McKevy fit this into a tight window. The Jerron Bell on fourth and goal two, and Howard and tie things up on their home field. And the Hustling Tigers ain't done. Ja'Karen Sanders finding daylight and then finding the end zone as Howard now leads East Ham 14 to seven. What a ball game here, but the Canes waste no time clapping back. Jaden Hayward leaving or weaving his way through the Howard D for six. And we didn't get the final for this one. Once we do, we'll update it online for you. And let's get to the scoreboards one last time. We got North Murray over Harrelson County, Bremen over Ridgeland, and Adairsville. Ooh, pulls out a tough one over Ringgold by two. Druid Hills by one point over Southeast Whitfield, 21 to 20. North Sand Mountain over Whitesburg Christian Academies. We go to Alabama. We got Pisca over Eider. 
and one more. We got Scottsboro over Arab. Andrew shuts out Hickory Hawks and Murphy wins at home. Man, have we had some fun on this show this season. And next Friday will be our last in the month of September, which means lock your doors, turn your nightlight on, hide under the covers if you may, because spooky season is upon us, folks. But before you do all that, tell a friend about this show. Watch it again yourself online at local3news.com or inside the Local 3 News app. Enjoy some college football tomorrow. Watch yourself, boys and girls, and have a lovely, lovely weekend. Friday Night Football is brought to you by Food City and Sonic Drive-In. We thank the Chattanooga area Arby's for feeding our Friday Night Football team. Arby's, we have the meats.